Mike Richardson here with the inauguration show of What You Need to Know. Today we're presenting Mastery Selectman Andrew Greiley. Uh, he's our most experienced local official with regard to wastewater. Uh, and over the next short while, we'll be bringing you different shows about the issue, leading up to town meeting, where you have an opportunity to help us lead into the future. To start, we want to introduce you to Andrew, who is at the forefront of this charge. Uh, Andrew, could you just introduce yourself along with some background information on your education, business experience, and your present responsibilities with the town of Mastery? Sure, Mike. Thank you for having me. So I'm in my fifth term on the Board of Selectmen. I had uh, uh, two terms starting in the late 1980s and then some time off for good behavior. Um, and then I came back and I'm now in my third term in this run. Um, throughout that period of time, obviously been very interested in, in helping the town deal with its water quality problem. Professionally, you know, my history is mostly in the environmental field, uh, worked for over 20 years in state service at various positions at the State Department of Environmental Protection and then completing my state service uh, in Governor Romney's cabinet overseeing energy, environment, transportation and housing. Um, and since then I've worked uh, as a consultant to Barnesville County, uh, ran my own consulting business uh, for over a decade and then um, now I'm spending my time as the executive director of the Association to Preserve Cape Cod. Uh, as expected, quite impressive. Uh, what I'd like you to sort of let the audience know is uh, a little bit more about the connection to wastewater. And, and how has that uh, connection progressed over the years up to today for you? Well, so, you know, you know wastewater on Cape Cod is tied directly to water quality. So, you know, wastewater uh, for most of us, both in Mashpee and elsewhere on the Cape, uh, we have backyard septic systems that take the waste from our home, uh, treat it uh, in the sense that it protects the public health and the public from exposure to bacteria, uh, but it doesn't provide any meaningful level of treatment. And so over the years, as the Cape has developed, um, these backyard systems serve the region adequately. Uh, it's only until the 1980s when we saw a big increase in development on the Cape that the impact of uh, poorly treated septic effluent on our water resources became evident. And we are living with the impacts of those decisions that were made uh, back in the uh, 60s, 70s, and 80s now. And what happens basically is that um, the everything that uh, we see for water, whether it's a surface water pond, freshwater pond, a river on the Cape, or our estuaries, are fed and supported by our groundwater. Our groundwater also provides our drinking water. And all of our groundwater comes from precipitation from the sky, either in the form of rain or snow. And as the uh, water moves through the ground, um, it ultimately finds its way to one of those surface water features. And as it moves through the ground, it picks up whatever we happen to put in or on the ground and brings it with it to those uh, water resources. So in the instance of wastewater, what we have happening is the introduction of large volumes of nutrients, in particular for the marine side, uh, nitrogen, but for the freshwater side, phosphorus. It's a byproduct of the human waste. Um, it's not removed in any meaningful way from our, by our septic systems and it's actually very uh, efficiently injected into our groundwater by our septic systems. And so the groundwater picks up that, all those nutrients and moves either to the closest freshwater pond, river, or directly to the estuary, where once in that, uh, those environmental resources, uh, much like the fertilizer that you apply perhaps on your lawn or to your house plants, those nutrients, the nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, feed existing naturally occurring algae that occur in the water uh, and allow those plants to grow to a extent that they outcompete and therefore smother uh, other forms of life that are necessary to a healthy estuary or pond. And we see largely degraded water bodies that um, don't have clean bottoms, don't have life on the bottom that's necessary for healthy ecosystem, don't have the plant life that provides the oxygen that supports the fish life that a healthy uh, aquatic ecosystem would have. 
And what we have in Mashby as a result are um, severely degraded and uh, damaged uh, bays and, and uh, saltwater rivers that we now have to clean up. Uh, it seems awful complicated. Uh, as opposed to Cape Cod uh, itself, uh, is there something different about Mashpee or uh, how does this specifically impact Mashpee relative to the rest of the Cape or is it, or is it the same? It's basically the same. So if you look at, um, if you look at the Cape as a whole, there are about 53 marine systems. Uh, like Papanessa and Wakoit Bay, which are ours, very similar across the Cape. All of the south-facing embayments, like Papanessa, like Wakoit, everything facing the south, and most of the ones facing Buzzers Bay to the west um, are suffering from exactly the same thing that we're seeing in Mashpee. Too many nutrients from too many septic systems, too much lawn runoff of fertilizers, um, and our water bodies are uh, are degraded as a result. The estuaries that face the north side of the Cape do a little bit better, um, in part because they're less heavily developed, and in part because um, instead of two or three feet of tidal exchange on the south side, as we see in Wakoid and Papanessa, there's a height difference between um, high and low tide. It's 11 or 12 feet on the north side of the Cape, and the embayments are much more open. So all of our self-facing embayments uh, are suffering, um, unfortunately, in Mashpee because of both the intensity of development around our bays and the shallow nature of our bays and the um, nature of the way the Mashpee and Santuit rivers come in. Papanesset and Bukoy are among the most heavily degraded water bodies on the self-facing Cape. Are we different than anybody in that regard? No, but we got it bad. Uh, well, thank you, Andrew and uh, Mashby. Uh, thanks for spending some precious time today with us, getting to know Andrew Gottlieb a little bit better. Uh, in our next issue, we'll delve a little deeper into this issue. Uh, so stay tuned for the next edition of What You Need to Know. Hello, Mashpee. Mike Richardson here. I've been a longtime resident and a member of many boards, committees, and charitable organizations. I'm here to announce a new series of shows about Mashpee, a town that continues to be challenged by issues and the environment. What you need to know will bring you stories that impact your lives, your family, and your future. We're a small but complicated community with a wide variety of issues that impact us all on a daily basis but we often find ourselves still lacking details of what's really happening around us. With this show, we hope to provide a remedy for that. We will cover finances, leadership, activities, and any other topic about mastery that you need to know. I want to hear from you and what you want to hear about. Please send me any suggestions or ideas at info at Use the subject line, what you need to know. We'll be broadcasting our shows on Mastery TV, Channel 99, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter on a regular basis. Please stay tuned for more coming your way on What You Need to Know with Mike Richardson. Uh, welcome back. Mike Richardson here again with What You Need to Know. Uh, this is the second session with Andrew Gottlieb, and we're going to dig a little deeper into the wastewater situation. Uh, Andrew, uh, maybe you're just starting with a very simple definition for our audience. What's a good definition of wastewater? Wastewater is um, basically everything that flows out of your house or business, uh, either into a treatment plant, if you're in one of the condos or uh, larger communities, they're serviced by private wastewater treatment facilities, but more likely uh, into a septic system that's in your backyard. So it's all the uh, processed water that you use, it goes down your sink, down the shower, and obviously the primary consideration is what flushes down your toilet. Okay, thank you. That's, that's a good clarity for our residents to understand when they hear the term wastewater, what it means. Uh, I don't know the answer to this question, so I'm going to ask. Uh, 
How does it impact the different bodies of water? I mean, you mentioned earlier in the previous session uh, ponds and lakes, but we have lakes and we have ponds and we have rivers and we have bays and we have estuaries and we have the ocean. Uh, maybe I'm making it too complicated, but uh, are there different approaches to address the water in those bodies of water? Uh, and which one are we looking to impact first? Well, there's some similarities across the board. And basically, whether it's a pond, stream, or uh, estuary, or the open ocean, uh, the problem is we're overfeeding the plants that live in those resources. And when you put things out of balance, the natural system ultimately collapses, which is what's happened. Uh, so the commonality across all these types of water bodies is that we need to reduce the amount of nutrients that we're putting in first and foremost through controlling our wastewater and actually treating it to remove the nutrients before putting it back out to the environment but secondarily um, to see people improve their land management practices and lay off the fertilization of their lawns and gardens uh, and ornamental bushes because those during times of rain uh, do uh, result in some direct wash offs uh, into these water bodies um, and cause some portion of the problem. But the primary issue we're dealing with, um, and it's a different nutrient mix depending on whether you're talking freshwater or saltwater, is lower the nutrient load into our water bodies and allow nature to heal itself. Okay, uh, that's, uh, that's a good summary. So maybe I can ask you to take us one step further, uh, not starting at the beginning necessarily because I don't know when that was, but what's happened uh, to get us to where we are today? Uh, how have we uh, come to the conclusion that we have to do something? Have there been projects or committees or meetings or experts? I mean, what has built uh, up the, the scope, if you will, to where we are today? And sure. how has so, that happened? So, you know, I'll try and summarize 30 years of effort into a relatively, uh, actually more than 30 years of effort. But there's been work being done um, simultaneously at different levels. Um, the whole process probably started in the 1980s where people began, who spend time on our waters, began to see some decline in water quality and see large mats of algae floating around, began to ask the question why. And what was discovered was that uh, with the state uh, Department of Environmental protections assistance was that estuaries were being over fertilized uh, and the primary source of that was was from nutrients and so the state uh, began doing studies on throughout the Cape to try and determine what the nutrient budget should be for each one of these water bodies at the same time the town of Mashpee along with a number of other towns started to look at um, where are the major sources of nutrients within our community? Are they from agriculture? Are they from landscaping activity? Are they from treatment plants? Are they from septic systems? So beginning in the late 1980s, Mashpee started taking a hard look at what our sources were, were so that once we got information from the state about how much the resource could handle, we could match that up with what our sources are and come up with an assessment of what the best management strategy is to get to the environmentally sound target. So the town looked at in through the 90s uh, and early 2000s, you know, what a plan would be. And the plan initially was coming uh, via the sewer commission, which was created uh, a couple of decades ago now to have primary responsibility for this issue for the town was a sewer everything program. And people looked at the cost of that and said, yeah, that's not what we want to have for this community. So the Sewer Commission went back, working with the Department of Natural Resources or the Shellfish Commission at the time, and started to look at, well, what are the possibilities of utilizing shellfish as a, par as a portion for the remedial efforts that we need? And the town came up with a pretty creative plan to support major shellfish uh, investment so that because shellfish do take some of the nitrogen out of the water and came up with some pretty aggressive targets that have been approved by the state for what we could expect out of shellfish. And then the sewer commission went back and redid their analysis to say, well, if we can rely on the shellfish to take out a certain amount of the nitrogen load, what do we need to treat that's remaining? 
And that's what you have now. So back in 2015, uh, the state received, or the town received approval from the state for an overall wastewater management program that was balanced between the utilization of shellfish and the creation of some limited wastewater treatment and sewering, which is what we're uh, asking town meeting to approve uh, on May 3rd this year. So there have been a number of committees, a collaborative effort between um, the shellfish department, the natural resources department, um, and the sewer commission. And I think what's different now and why this is now proceeding to town meeting is that you have the unanimity and the support of the board of selectmen on both the need and justification for this and the cost effectiveness of the program. And you have the unanimity of the finance committee of which I know you're a member, Mike, uh, also in support of this. So a lot has changed. This has gone through numerous levels of analysis, planning, replanning, some difficult starts and stops uh, to get us to the point now where, uh, at least among town officials, there seems to be uh, a complete agreement that this is the right plan at the right time at the right cost for us to proceed. Well, uh, we've come to the end of our second show on wastewater with Andrew Gartley. By now, uh, you kind of have an idea of how this all started, what got us to where we are, uh, this place in time. Uh, in our last segment, which is coming up shortly, we'll hone in on a solution, one that's most important to you all, uh, so that when you get to town meeting, you can make the right decision. Hello, Mastery. Mike Richardson here. I've been a longtime resident and a member of many boards, committees, and charitable organizations. I'm here to announce a new series of shows about Mastery, a town that continues to be challenged by issues and the environment. What you need to know will bring you stories that impact your lives, your family, and your future. We're a small but complicated community with a wide variety of issues that impact us all on a daily basis. But we often find ourselves still lacking details of what's really happening around us. With this show, we hope to provide a remedy for that. We will cover finances, leadership, activities, and any other topic about mastery that you need to know. I want to hear from you and what you want to hear about. Please send me any suggestions or ideas at info at masterytv.com. Use the subject line, what you need to know. We'll be broadcasting our shows on Mastery TV, Channel 99, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter on a regular basis. Please stay tuned for more coming your way on What You Need to Know with Mike Richardson. Mike Richardson here and welcome back to What You Need to Know. Uh, this is our third segment uh, on wastewater with Andrew Gartley. Uh, and today we're going to get into the details, the details you need to know about as you look forward to our coming up annual town meeting, uh, where you, you know, the executive branch of our government, uh, decide on our future with regard to wastewater. So welcome again, Andrew. And today we'd like you to put the nuts and bolts on the wastewater plan. What's going to happen? Uh, when it, will it happen? Where will it happen? And why it's important for everyone to totally understand and support the effort. Uh, so without putting limitations on your response, a total overview of phase one, maybe proposed costs, funding sources, timeframes, and whatever else you can uh, provide for the residents to know. So take it away. Okay, Mike, thank you for the opportunity to address this. So um, I think it's important for people to realize that the town has an overall plan that has potentially up to five phases in it. The hope and expectation is that we will not have to go much beyond phase two uh, to achieve the water quality goal. And part of our success in being able to stop at phase two is dependent on how good a job our shellfish program does at uh, improving the water quality in the bays in tandem with our wastewater infrastructure. So people should realize that there's more to come, um, but what you're being asked to consider uh, at town meeting First and foremost, in Article 6, is a question that would authorize the town to borrow and construct 
a wastewater treatment facility sited adjacent to the town transfer station um, and associated sewer pipes the sewer uh, an area immediately around the transfer station which is in the headwaters of the marine portion of the of the Mashpee River across 28 uh, down Quinnequisset, down along Mashby Neck Road, being the first phase of this sewer program. Um, there will be subsequent phases, and that system will potentially be expanded over time by subsequent vote and approval by town meetings. But uh, the question before the voters right now is going to be whether to authorize the town to spend what we anticipate to be $54 million to build that initial treatment plant and that initial round of sewering. Um, should town meeting um, adopt that article, and it requires a two-thirds vote to do so. So I will tell you, if you care about clean water, um, you need to come to town meeting and vote for this particular question. Don't assume that someone else is going to do it for you or that this is such a, a slam dunk that you don't need to show up. You actually do. Uh, two-thirds is a significant burden, um, and, and we need everyone's support to, to get there. Uh, should that vote pass, there will be two other questions that are considered. Uh, Article 7, which is a relatively minor uh, matter to um, allow the town to use a portion of some conservation land to build a pump station. Um, it's a relatively small issue. It's 2,000 square feet of a two-and-a-half-acre parcel. Um, and then question 8 is an important one. Uh, the state offers towns on Cape Cod the opportunity to get a low interest loan, which Mashby has qualified for. We are currently in line for a 2% loan uh, for the $54 million. Um, the town has the option to reduce that interest rate to a zero. To do so, in order, uh, or in order to do so, we would need to adopt a bylaw that um, allows for some existing homes to grow and increase their uh, footprint and therefore their wastewater flow, but to ensure that there are some reasonable limits on how much new wastewater is going to go into our treatment facility. Uh, we modeled our bylaw proposal on that, which was adopted in the town of Falmouth. And just so people are clear, um, the adoption of this bylaw um, will allow the town to qualify for a zero interest loan. The difference in interest payments between the 2% loan that we currently qualify for and the 0% interest loan that this bylaw would enable us to qualify for is $17 million in interest payments the taxpayers of the town of Mashpee will not have to make. And just for additional clarity, it provides for any homeowner who is in and serviced by the sewers um, to have uh, access to and build their home out to a minimum of four bedrooms. So if you have a small house that's currently limited uh, because your lot is small and your septic system won't handle more flow, this bylaw would give you the ability to go up to four bedrooms. And if you have more than an acre, um, you are allowed an additional bedroom for uh, every 10,000 feet of lot coverage. So it is a sensible limit but it is not a no growth limit um, and it does allow us to avoid a significant cost. Um, so those are the three town meeting articles that are necessary. There's also a debt exclusion on the annual election ballot the following Saturday, which I believe is the 8th. Um, and what that does is it allows us to go ahead and make the borrowing that we need to do um, and not consume all of our debt capacity so that in the future if we need to do borrowing for a road project or an improvement to the school or some other municipal project we have debt capacity within our, our books in order to be able to borrow for those it's important for people to realize that the town has adopted a finance plan uh, to pay for the 54 million dollar capital cost that voters are being asked to approve that will not rely on increasing property taxes. Uh, we have established a number of revenue streams um, that will more than cover the debt service on this loan. So I've heard concerns that, well, if you've got the money, why do you need the debt exclusion? Doesn't this allow you to tax us twice? 
and it doesn't. Uh, what it does is it preserves our bond rating and our credit rating because we preserve our capacity to borrow in the future. Um, but because we have identified funding sources that will service this debt, um, people should rest assured that there will not be an, any increase in their property taxes associated with this project. So we need both of those things to pass. We need Article 6 to pass, then we need Question 1 at the ballot pass in order for this project to be able to proceed. Well, thank you for an extremely well-articulated uh, overview of this problem. Uh, I guess I would ask one last question before we close this show, and that is, um, can you, could you give us an idea of what the future might look like? Uh, will there be second or third phases, uh, uh, or do you believe this will address the issue uh, not once and for all, but for this, for this time frame. I can say with a fair degree of confidence there will be a second. We will add, come back to the voters in several years and ask for phase two. Uh, the analysis that we've done has shown that um, the shellfish have great potential to, um, potent to realistically avoid phases three, four, and five, but that phase two is going to be necessary. Um, obviously, if the shellfish uh, do better than we anticipate or that we're allowed to plan for, then you know we may be able to modify a phase two. I think, in all honesty, it's likely there will be a phase two. I'm hopeful that we don't have to go beyond that. Um, but you know, the future is, is somewhat uncertain, obviously. Um, so I think it's it's reasonable for people to expect there will be more to come. But I think that um, just as we're able. Uh, to take what was a significant unknown and therefore something that was feared that was going to, um, you know, really destroy the town's uh, finances and work through the process and use new tools and new revenue streams that were made available to us by the legislature, primarily through the hotel motel, short-term rental tax, uh, and the creation of a water infrastructure fund. We've been able to use tools to uh, finance this project uh, without asking the voters to increase their property taxes. And I would say that as we move forward, uh, we can look to uh, phase two with some more optimism that it will similarly uh, be mitigated in its financial impact by some of these existing revenue streams that have developed over the last couple of years. So um, I think people should look optimistically at what we've been able to do and also realize that there is a significant cost to doing nothing. And the significant cost of doing nothing is that the water resources on which all of our property tax values are built, all of our investment value is built, all of our businesses are built, is jeopardized if we don't have good water quality. And so we need to spend a little bit of money uh, as a community to ensure our long-term viability as a destination that people want to come live at and that supports our economy. Well, thank you, Andrew, for these three segments, uh, bringing the complicated and complex issue of wastewater into our homes. Um, we hope those watching uh, have gained some additional understanding uh, of the effort that's gone into this project. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Andrew Gottlieb as one of our selectmen, uh, an individual who's dedicated to helping Mashpee solve this problem and who's done an awful lot of work and effort behind the scenes uh, as well, getting us to the point where we can make the decision which best impacts our future lives. So uh, that's it. Uh, this is the last show with Andrew for now. Well, I have a feeling we'll be back talking about additional phases. Uh, Mike Richardson for uh, What You Need to Know, over and out.